I was also kind of keeping an eye out of that um, stuff that I was talking about on the previous podcast regarding Yuri and Riley. So as most of you guys know, Moist Critical, also known as Charlie, did a reaction video about it. And his video, last time I checked, was on like 1.2 million views, right? Which is fucking amazing because I've been almost, I've been quote unquote covering um, some of Yuri's crash out since the beginning, as most of you guys will know. And it was always kind of like our little, you know, dumb thing that we kind of check on because who was Yuri at that time? He was kind of a somebody lo loosely associated with No Jumper. Outside of that, if he wasn't really clocked in, he didn't really know who he was. So he wasn't like a famous dude anybody would care about. But the crash outs were fucking entertaining, especially on stream to react to. Especially the ones where they go on holiday, where they're in Amsterdam, the one where they were in London, um, you know, the stuff that happened in America. Like just crazy crash outs between the both of them where they didn't, they clearly weren't able to communicate. They clearly were both quite insecure, clearly very codependent crazy situations so it's amazing to see somebody of um moist critical stature and level and fame be able to take that story you'll be able to take yuri's kind of crash outs and put it on such a big platform and now everybody's seeing it around the world it's fucking amazing i used to pray for days like this right that people would be able to see how much of an idiot and how much of a shitty boyfriend that guy is or just forget an idiot just how much of a pussy is as a man forget the shitty boyfriend thing i think we can all be shitty boyfriends but just as a dude he's just like the worst type of dude right cool regardless um the response to it has been fucking crazy um yuri has obviously went on a stream I'll, I'll probably talk about it another time and he did open his heart out or pour his heart out regarding the whole situation he did explain that he apologized to his girlfriend riley to be fair to yuri the thing that i've learned which is kind of sad for him that crash out didn't happen the other day it happened like three or five days ago you know that allegedly that crash that happened like three or five days ago but you know how the internet works like it somehow um it happened to jump on that cycle algorithm wise and it kind of popped but it didn't happen recently so it happened recently but not like the other day recently so he must be destroyed by that because obviously they've kind of moved on from it and now the internet kind of you know um started it all up again so i thought that was pretty funny to see obviously most critical react to it but one of the saddest things about it was reading the comments and again, take this comment with a pinch of salt, but reading the comments was really sad because a lot of Riley's actual friends from school, from past work, were commenting on Moist Critical's video and talking about how sad it was that she's in that situation and basically lampooning and, you know, really ripping into fucking Yuri, rightfully so. But one of the comments I thought that really stood out was this comment here that somebody posted on the No Jumper subreddit. Now, we want to read it to you, right? It's, it was left by a person called World Peace Darren. And it said the following, I grew up with Riley. We went to elementary school, middle school and high school together. She was always super nice, respectful. Out of all the girls who were not nice or for the streets, Riley was a rare diamond. She grew up with Disney. When she wasn't working hard on her homework, she would volunteer <coughs> with children and dress up as different Disney princesses with kids who had cancer and things like that. Riley is a good girl. I had hoped that when she dated Yuri or whatever the fuck his name is, by the way, this was like her first boyfriend, that he would treat her right and she would be happy. Then for five years, I watched Riley get taken for granted and used to prop up for Riley, used as a prop for Yuri. For the last five years, I've been hoping that she would dump the dude. Now I see her being treated bad on this live. It continues. Uh, on this live, uh, da da da. Well, sorry. Um, all because she filmed one random video in high school talking about nothing. Literally, maybe four or five people saw the video, and now Yuri is publicly shaming her. I really hope Yuri, or oh, sorry, Riley dumps him. And thank you, Penguins, for bringing this to my attention. I had always wondered what happened to one of the only few nice girls from my hometown. Sad to see she's being taken for granted by some Russian dude. I hope Riley sees your video and realizes she is a star and can be and can start her own YouTube channel. And she doesn't need to be with such a negative man around her the really sad thing about this is that i think this is a classic kind of case of like unfortunately some of us peak at high school and i think sometimes it's really sad or it's because i think this situation with riley is only getting attention in my opinion this is my opinion don't kill me for this or if you're gonna kill me kill me i don't give a fuck but this story with riley is only getting attention because riley's attractive if Riley wasn't attractive, people wouldn't give a fuck. But because Riley's attractive and Yuri obviously isn't, right? 
people kind of have this weird feeling of like she deserves better. They feel like they could give her better. They feel like Riley's punching above his weight and he shouldn't have that kind of attitude when he's ugly and shit and a dweeb. I get it. Cool. But the sad thing about it is that for the most part, I know from my experience in school, a lot of the really pretty girls that a lot of us boys were super bothered about and we all kind of like were obsessed with and we'd all try and kind of ask out and we'd all try and talk to and holler at, most of them turned up to not amount for much out after school. Like their lives after kind of like middle school, high school, college and shit didn't really amount to much, unfortunately. And I've always wondered why that was the case. Why is it the case that the most, the people that you remember when you were in school that were just stunning to look at, people that you thought, oh my God, this person's going to be a TV star. They're going to be a presenter. They're just going to get paid to just look good because they look good from when we're young or they just look like an adult or whatever it may be. Somehow don't really end up kind of fulfilling their potential. But in the people that you didn't look at, the girl that you kind of spoke to, um, you know um, rudely or the person you disregarded or the one that you called an ugly duckling then kind of blossomed into this beautiful kind of princess queen person who's now doing amazing things and whatever it may be i've always wondered what that's the case because I, I can think of one particular girl who was um one of the kind of hot girls in our school um after i think just when i reached college or something and i was like maybe 17 18 she already had four kids by then by like three different dudes and I was like, raw Ted. Like her, like, and again, she was rich. She was one of the rare ones, like super attractive and also incredibly smart, like across all subjects. So her co, her entire kind of academic career was basically halted the moment she had her first kid. And of course, by the time the third or fourth came out, it was already over. And she had kind of transitioned to being like a full time mum. But I'm also wondering, is this such a bad thing to peak in high school? Because I'm thinking to myself, like, at least you had a peak. Because some of us don't ever get to have a time where we get to kind of bask in the light, in the fucking, in the light of the stage, in the, we get to bask in the adoration from people around us, our peers, people that, you know, that we know and love or whatever it may be, our colleagues. Maybe there is some, there is a utility to peaking in high school and having that moment where like you can remember fondly in your old age oh my god man i was hot stuff back in the day oh my god all the guys were after me oh my god i used to get all these opportunities i was getting flown all around the world for competitions for this for that for cheerleading for ballet blah 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 maybe it's quite good to actually peak in high school because at least you had a peak and then when you're older when you're older you can kind of settle down and you can kind of be okay with the transition because i think the saddest thing is when people peak in high school, but they don't let go of that high school persona. Like a classic example is, um, what's his name? Burt Kreischer, right? Burt Kreischer is like an adult frat boy. He's never been able to kind of let go of this image of himself as being like the party monster, right? He had the article written about him in the Rolling Stone and he just hasn't been able to let go of that kind of image of like the number one party guy in Florida, blah, 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 blah. And it's really ridiculous. It's really kind of sad to be that frat boy to have that frat boy persona when you're in your mid 50s with like two kids and a wife but i think having that frat boy persona and being known as that party boy when you were between the ages of like 17 and 25 and and remembering that in your old age is actually good for you because at least you knew you lived a life you lived a life worth living. You had a moment in the sun. You had a moment when you were really popular. If you still live in the same town, you probably still know a lot of the people who still look at you fondly that way. You still get some winks from a couple of people here and there. Do you know what I mean? Like, that, there is a utility to it. There really is. But I think the sadness with the Riley situation mostly comes from people having this, like, disnified vision of the future where like the pretty girl just gets everything in the end the story ends like in happily ever after and sometimes it doesn't sometimes the hottest girl in your school does end up with a right with a, sometimes the hottest girl in your school does end up with a yuri type character an ugly insecure emotionally fragile immature dweeb of a dude who's taken her for granted and advantage all over the gaff across the internet in fucking full 1080p do you know what I mean? That's sometimes a sad reality of it. But also, I feel like people should extend this kind of empathy to some of the uglies out there. Some of the fat and ugly people out there who probably don't get this type of empathy and sympathy from the public should get it also. It's kind of unfair that people are looking at her just because she's got, you know, a pretty face and a bum and tits and stuff. They're like, oh my God, it's so sad. I want to say, but it's like, bro, sometimes 
if people don't want to be saved or they enjoy the situation that they or sorry not enjoy it. if they're okay with the situation that they're in you just have to let it kind of play out there's nothing really you can do to kind of force them out of it and as most of us would know myself included when you've got friends who are in a abusive relationship there is literally nothing you can do it is quite a very it is an unfortunately very helpless situation to be in as a friend and maybe it's even worse when you're the person in it because maybe you can look at yourself from the outside in but you can't actually do anything but it's really hard when you're a friend or a family member and someone's in an abusive relationship because there's nothing you can do to convince them otherwise they have to get to that resolution they have to get to that conclusion themselves it's almost similar to like somebody who's fat and wants to lose weight but doesn't know how to start there's nothing you can do to get them to start. You can maybe take them out for a run. You can maybe send them all these fucking diet plans, whatever it may, it may be. But until they decide to lose weight, until they decide to stop being fat, that's when it will change. But until that happens, it's not going to change. Same with the abusive relationship. Until they make the decision to walk away from that person, whatever, it's not going to go anywhere. So as unfortunate as it is for a lot of Riley's friends to see her in this situation, until she makes that decision herself to step away and to leave and do something different, it's not going to change. Because, And I'm saying this to leave thing, not because of that one video, again, because I've been following this whole Riley um, Yuri relationship thing from, I'm saying the beginning, but from the beginning of when all the crash out started online, I've been kind of watching a lot of these things, reacting to it on my channel and stuff, especially on a random show. And it's been a, con it's been a, con it's been a consistent thing in their relationship. It's not like a one time thing. So I know like Yuri's acting like it's a one time thing, but it happens all the time. They get annoyed at each other. They wind each other up very easily. I guess more so in terms of Yuri's side of things. He's incredibly insecure when it comes to Riley, what she wears, where she goes, who she talks to. Very, very odd, especially when you consider the amount of things that he's been, he's done on video. If you'd imagine if she did the same things, he would have, he would, he would have blown a gasket. Do you know what I mean? Um, so the crashes have been fucking crazy to see. And obviously the most critical video going to 1.2 million has been mad. Um, I'm not too sure the shame of it will do anything to change him, to be fair. I think, you know, he's just one of those people who has to kind of work on himself. I don't think you can work on yourself via somebody's reaction video. I think you actually have to go and seek help. So I don't think it will actually do anything in the long, 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 long term. But maybe it will kind of stem the tide of him constantly abusing her. And maybe she can have a bit of respite and kind of chill out for a little bit because he's been on her head top for a while. But... I am always want to, con I just want to conclude this by saying that I don't think it's bad to peak in high school. I honestly don't. I think most of us don't really amount to anything. I go back to that quote all the time that Joe Rogan loves to kind of overuse about, you know, most men live a, live a life of like, you know, um, quiet, what's that thing called? Misery or something, right? Basically, we don't, most men don't live a life worth living anyway. Um, so if that's the case and there's most, and some of us have the opportunity to have a moment in the sun, or under the spotlight in high school, it's not a bad thing, you know? You peaked in high school, maybe you're not the same person you were in high school anymore, maybe you've got a bit of a belly, maybe you can't run a 40 and 4-5 anymore, maybe you can't fucking dunk a basketball anymore, but there was a time when you could. There was a time when people were cheering your name, when people were excited to see you and shit. Remember that, savor that, because it doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't happen all the bloody, bloody, bloody time.